welcome to Breaking Down Bergman. This week it's Port of Call. Hey, Bill. Hey. Come and talk. Nej, ingen luft. Fy jävla. Det är grovskull från land. På käften. Du ska inte bry dig om den där kreken. Men hon tycker att du kunde ha kommit fram och hälsat. Men du ska inte vara så där blöt. Skratta dem i ansiktet och ge igen bara. Vi vill inte ihop med gänget igen. Vi vill inte komma tillbaka. Mm. Det tror du kan slippa. Ja, ja, vill du inte så vill du inte. En dag duger man väl till kompis igen. Jag måste gå nu. Jag förstår precis hur du känner det. So this is Bergman's fifth feature, uh, which is in 1948. It's, um, I think what we noticed from the previous four is that this has been a noticeable turning point for Bergman. Yeah, this is a movie that I guess if I could find two things. The first is that it's very controversial. Uh, there's a lot of things in here that even shocked us now. Um, and the second thing is that, wow, the cinematography. There is a huge change here just in terms of the way that the Bergman movie looks. I guess what we want to start with is the plot summary. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a familiar territory, but in, not in such a familiar way. Yeah, and it was a little bit jumpy, so it's kind of hard to keep a straight line because we kind of get the, the story in bits, like it becomes revealed. Right. But not... It starts with a suicide. Yeah, it begins with a suicide uh, of a young girl, and then she's rescued by a sailor with whom she develops a relationship. We later find out that she's had a very troubled past. She's had multiple affairs, even though she's very young. She comes from a very poor but very conservative religious family who then, in order to kind of reform her, uh, puts her in things called reformatories. So it's like a old school juvie type thing, but run by nuns, so very strange. So she's very repressed, she's very depressed, and the relationship that she develops with the sailor that rescues her is kind of like, um, it's like a glimmer of hope, but then it becomes jeopardized by her revealing her dark past. This is all sort of told in what has been known as the neo-realist style. Um, this look at the lower class, uh, their troubles, um, how they're sort of locked in a certain state, and the style of acting um, mm -hmm. here is very similar to Italian neorealism, um, and it's the only time that Bergman really has focused on that. And I think that maybe gave us a little bit of trouble kind of dissecting this plot line. Yeah, because maybe, you're right, maybe it's because of the style, but it didn't seem to um, dive into the characters as much on this one. No. It was just kind of like a, a very stark and frank presentation of one heavy hitting topic after another. Okay, so let's talk about some of these controversial topics. Obviously the first one is abortion, which 1948, anywhere in the world pretty much. Yeah, you don't talk about it. It doesn't happen. Right, and particularly not in Hollywood. Now of course Bergman's not filming in Hollywood, but there's a reason why this movie was never released in the US. Mm -hmm. Part of it was because of abortion. So mm -hmm. what, what do we see here? Well, for one, there, it's, illegal, it's an illegal abortion. So it's, uh, again, it's, it's one of the young girls, kind of a bad wild girl, the wildest of the bunch, who um, has a lover, gets pregnant, and then, you know, raises funds amongst her friends to go get the baby taken care of illegally, and then she dies from mm -hmm. the abortion. Um, and again, like, it, it's just, it's just there, you know, and we, the, as a viewer, I was very torn, because on the one hand, I felt very strongly for her in the situation that she was in, um, because clearly, like, in kind of, that kind of decorous society, she can't just go out there and have a love child, it doesn't work like that. And, and I think maybe it's, it's him trying to kind of pop the lid on the hardship of being in that social class. But I think that's kind of what I appreciated about the film, again, like this kind of frank presentation. Repression was definitely uh, a topic in the movie, right? And a lot of the, the characters got into trouble because of the impulsiveness of the things that they did and the decisions that they made, right? So it, it, it's kind of raw, it's impulsive, it's you know, less inhibited, yeah. and I think the presentation was kind of like that too. So the scenes came one after the other, there wasn't lead up, there wasn't context necessarily, it was just presented. Yeah. And that's kind of how the character, like, that was the main struggle for a lot of the characters. They struggled with being proper, they struggled with fitting into the conservative norms of the society and acting right. Okay, so all of this controversy aside, there was one thing we really enjoyed about this movie, and it was the look of it. And we 
after the movie, we said, wow, this is something different. Mm -hmm. Who shot this? It turns out the guy's name is Gunnar Fisher, and this is actually the start of a 12-year career um, with Bergman. Mm -hmm. This guy actually worked with Walt Disney as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, See, I didn't, I don't know, like, I'm, I don't come from a cinematic background of any kind, so I didn't even know why the movie was more enjoyable to me, but I did notice that it, there was more fluidity, if I can even use that word, like it just seems to flow better mm. from one scene to the next. And visually. Visually, yeah, like there's a, there's a certain aesthetic to the film that was just more calming uh, and more, I enjoyed it more as a viewer. Right, and uh, there's just certain shots to me that just jumped out and I automatically knew that someone else, somebody different was behind the camera framing these shots. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I don't know, I'm kind of interested in this kind of fisher guy. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how, how that develops. But Port of Call as a whole, what do we think of this? I think it should be seen, just because I really feel like Bergman kind of threw down the gauntlet on this one and said, okay, you know what, I'm not afraid, I'm going to put things out there that I'm interested in talking about, and if it bothers people, great. Okay. I am kind of in the middle on it. I agree with you. I think the uh, him addressing abortion, a fantastic, really great discussion point. As a film, kind of dull. Um, as a visual piece of work, more interesting. So I'm right in the middle there, saying, you know, you could take it, you could leave it, um, but there is a little bit here. This this is a significant point in Bergman's career. Would you say that this is a uh, an early 1940s Girls Gone Wild? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm just kidding. No! <laughs> okay. No, but there are some wild girls in it. There are some wild girls in it. Well, I think by our standards, they're normal, but for the time, okay. they were considered. It was yeah. Girls Gone Wild for 1948. I'm just kidding. Okay, sure you are, Sonia. <laughs> Alright, guys, so that is our <laughs> ridiculous <laughs> ending. Um, Port of Call. I'm sorry. Care of Sonia Stringman. Uh, and make David Friend, blame him. Okay, just subscribe to the channel and you can find out more about Girls Gone Wild too. I'm sure it's somewhere in this series. <laughs> um, subscribe to the channel, give us your comments, and uh, check out Port of Call. Let us know what you thought of it.